Okay. Here we are. Bird of the day. Yeah, I need better drink suggestion. Ones that have alcohol. Right now, I can make whiskey and ice. What I've got. Oh, do like a good ginger whiskey. Don't have any ginger ale right now, but yeah. Good ginger whiskey. Delish. Yeah. But anyway, bird of the day. Like I said, today's bird of the day was suggested by a fan on Twitter. She goes by the name of Hell. H-E-L. Hell. Looks like she's also a Twitch person. To be able to find her page, just head to my Twitter and see her comment. Yeah. Yeah, hell, hell is cool. Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, hell is a VTuber as well, it looks like. Or at least an aspiring VTuber. Not sure. But, uh, her species is bird themed like mine, and, uh, she happens to be a carrion crow. Hey! A carrion crow! Ah, oh, but Twig, it was only two weeks ago you did the American Crow. Well, yeah, yeah, but you gotta do what the fans ask. You gotta do what the fans ask. And, you know what? I learned a bit about the Carrion Crow. Well, you see, the Carrion Crow is the crow species that's most similar to the American Crow. So these are like my, like my closest cousins. Yeah, yeah, my closest cousins. They're, they're very... Very similar to the American crow, but there are a few differences. And I'm gonna tell you about those differences. So, carrion crow, they're the crows that you're gonna find in Europe and Asia. Yeah. So, the North American crow is uh, gonna be in uh, North America. Carrion crow, most of Europe, pretty much all of Europe. You go to Europe, you're gonna see these guys around. And, uh, there are some subspecies, but they're still the same species that uh, you can find all the way over in Japan. Yeah. Yeah, so they got a pretty broad range. Yeah. And uh, because this is a European species of bird, uh, obviously, I'm going to be giving all the details in metric today because I didn't feel like doing the conversion. So, from tip of beak to tip of tail, you're going to have 45 to 47 centimeters long. And a 93 to 104 uh, centimeter wingspan. And, uh, oh, do I feel a rivalry with other types of crows? It's all, oh, it's all love. It's all love. Us, us corvids, we stick together. Every single corvid is good friends with every other single corvid. Except for those bastard blue jays. Freaking jerks that don't like those stupid, not even black. It, how are they even on the Carvid family? So yeah, yeah, all Carvids are great. Love all other kinds of crows. Uh, especially anything that's in the genus Corvus. So. Yeah, yeah. We're Passeriforms. Corvidae. Species. Corvus coronae. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know. Lots of them. Distant relatives, I would say, I mean, super distant relatives would be non passeriforms And Corvidae, well, they're my family. They're my family. Always very smart. So, a uh, carrion crow, gonna live about 19 years, uh, maximum. That's the uh, longest ever recorded. As is usual, most, uh, most wild uh, crows don't live that long. There's just too much danger out in nature, but uh, one in captivity did live a little over 19 years old. So yeah. So, as I said before, they are very similar to the American crow. Very, very similar. About the same size, uh, all black coloring, you know. You can look at that picture on the right. You might say, well, I don't know. Is that a carrion crow or is that a North American crow? Yeah. Well, pretty sure this one's a carrion crow. Because that's what the caption said. That's what the photographer said. Yeah. Uh, 
Now, one of the biggest differences uh, is their social lives. Uh, American crows tend to be much more social with those they're not related to. You know, they'll, they'll be in large murders, and it's a murder whether it's an American crow or a carrion crow. Uh, but they tend to live a little more solitary lives. Uh, a lot of parts of the year, they'll, they'll be out on their own, just kind of doing their own bird thing. Uh, but they do mate. And when they find a mate, they mate for life. Yeah, the only thing that would change that is if one of the pair dies. And another neat thing, uh, another thing that I told you about the, uh, uh, you know, the American crow is that uh, older siblings will help raise the little babies. It's pretty cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah if this, you know, mama has uh, another nest full of eggs a year later, Last year's ones might stick around and be like, okay, okay, I'll help you feed the babies. I'll help you drive away predators. Yeah, yeah. And uh, crows, or carrion crows, do tend to be more social during the winter months. Uh, they will get in those trees and wherever they're roosting and huddle up for warmth. Yeah. Hey, Fading Reminder, great to have you back. Yeah, it's good to see you again. Did I help raise younger siblings? Uh, no, I am the baby of my family. Uh, my mom stopped having more babies after me. I am the youngest of the group. But, but, my sister has little fletchlings. And, uh, yeah, I do help them out. So, I suppose I raise younger nieces and nephews. Yeah. Yeah, they're good little birds. I like them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm little Corvus. Cute little Corvus. I'm the baby of the family. Uh, now, of course, uh, you know, I didn't really put it on here, but do I really need to say it? These birds are smart. They are super, super smart. Like, their brain development is very similar to that of you know, those weird primate things. You know, those those weird, hairy and sometimes smooth creatures that walk on two feet. Yeah, yeah. Very smart, you know. Problem solving, understand, counting, can recognize faces, all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah, you already knew about this from my American Crow presentation, but these ones, yeah, very smart. Us crows are our big brain. That's right, that's right. Very smart. And uh, because of that, they can thrive in pretty much any environment. You know, whether you got a rural farmland or a forest or a mountainous area or even, you know, a skyscraper filled urban jungle. Yeah, they're good there. And, uh, you know, they're, they're curious and uh, smart things. So, yeah, they can be your friend. You give them some snacks. You uh, show them that you're trustworthy and you don't hurt anybody, then uh, yeah, they'll be your friend. So you know, feed, feed those crows some some snacks, and maybe just maybe they'll come to trust you. Now, obviously, they you know, they can be a little bit. Uh, oh, you fed them oats. Very nice. Yeah, we like oats. Oats, good oats. Don't. Uh, don't mix up those sugary oatmeals that come pre-packaged and set that out. We might like it, but it's not healthy for us. We don't need much sugar and salt. So, as I've said before, anytime you are feeding birds, try to avoid processed foods with added salt and sugar. Not good for them. I know that, yeah, yeah, just plain oats. You got it, you got it. Yeah, you're smart, you're smart. And I appreciate you feed crows. It's great. So, what are my thoughts on the carrion crow? Well, I love french fries too. Oh, they're so tasty. So tasty. Uh, what are my thoughts? Well, carrion crow? I mean, you're like, clearly, he's going to give them the top ranking. That's right. They don't get a C or a B. They don't even get an A. Now, now these are S rank. Yeah, we're using that Japanese system. These are S+, plus because the carrion crow, they're my closest relatives, most similar to me. Top ranking, 10 out of 10. 
perfect bird. S rank bird. Yeah, you got it. You got it. They are the best. I, I love them. And uh, I hope you do too. They, that, me birds just don't get much better than this. I mean, the only way it could be better is if they were an American crow. Yeah. But one pitch below. And that titch is awfully small. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's my presentation on the carrion crow. All right.